Good morning. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you to all of you who are subscribers. I really appreciate it. Those of you who have been here for a long time. Those of you who are new, please explore my channel. If you hit the playlist tab, you'll see all the videos that I've done in the past. Some you may or may not agree with. The only thing that I can ask of you is not to be mad. Just shelve it. If you don't understand, or if you have a different perspective of some of the things that I've spoken about, spoken about, I'm more than willing to listen to respectful comments. It's not that there's anything in there that I believe that would be controversial, but you know how it is when <laughs> I think among the Christian faith, a lot of times, People get different information and they have their own opinions on how things are, but we tend to want to cut each other loose or be angry with each other or on one hand, if it's something that you agree on, you're fine. But then if it's something you don't agree on, uh, I've found people can take a, a whole U-turn. So any hoots, check out the playlist. There are lots of topics and categories. I've taken some of the videos that I've done because I've done quite a few videos here, but I've been able to categorize a few of them and you can take a look and see what's there. And I hope you enjoy that as well. So overall, thank you to everyone who has been here and those of you who are new and those of you who stop by every now and then. So when I talk about why narcissists enjoy church. I've done a video about this. I've done a few videos about this in the past. Why am I repeating it? It's just worth repeating. And as we're looking at the church, you see there's more and more over the top behaviors. There is a lot more pride up front and center. And you will be tempted if you don't have wisdom and if you don't understand what you're looking at to succumb to that, you will be tempted to believe that this is a norm and that people who behave this way, that it's okay. You may be tempted to believe that you're the problem. You're the one that just don't understand or the gaslighting terms that you're in your flesh when in fact your eyes are being opened. I remember I used to always pray and ask God to show me truth, to show me truth. And when the Lord began to show me truth around me, well, the very first thing that he did was to show me truth about myself. And I was thinking, that's not what I asked for. <laughs> but before God reveals anyone else, before God shows you other things, he must be able to trust you, trust me, to be able to be humble and to be willing to face the person in the mirror and see what is there and be willing to allow him to work on us, to be able to acknowledge our own faults and take that journey, that trip, that pr the progress that it takes to make that change. And once we're willing to humble ourselves, once we're willing to allow the Lord to strip those layers, and it's not that you and I are gonna be perfect and we have arrived, but having that sense of humility and submitting to God, he can now trust us to open up our eyes to those around us so we can see what is there. It does not mean that you're going to say, oh, that's okay. But you're able to see things as they are. He's able to entrust certain things to you, to me, in that you see what's before you, that you are in touch with him in the sense of having allowed him to work on our hearts, we can, we can hear clearly what he is trying to show us and understand clearly when the spirit of God is speaking through us so that we are not now conflicted with ourselves and our own self-belief and our own self-grandeur, grandiosity. And yeah, revelation can be very scary because when God begins to reveal things to you, you're going to find yourself having less and less and less people around you. <laughs> and 
And sometimes when you're not even looking for anything, you'll find that people begin to recoil or even withdraw from you because when the Spirit of God begins to, to, to permeate through us and the Spirit of the Lord is operating through us, let's, that's a better way to put it. In the spiritual realm, if someone is operating in darkness and if they are operating in disobedience or just the opposite, what's going to happen is things are going to be very odd. It's going to be very different between you two or between you and said group or someone that just does not like you for some reason. But especially when it's people that you've known and you guys got along and then all of a sudden you meet and it's super awkward and you don't know why. A lot of times it has to do with a change of the heart and they don't even know why. They just know things are not the same and then they begin to fade out. So just keep in mind that when we're asking God to bring revelation and all that stuff, be prepared for what that means. In terms of why the churches are so filled with narcissists, as I've said in the past and I'll say again, a lot of times you find a lot of leaders are narcissists and it's because they like being up front and they like to talk and they like the fact that they are going to be given all the attention all the time and people are there to hear them. They're the ones that's going to be bringing the word. They're the one that's up front. Everything is centered around them. Everyone was the wants to know what they're doing. People are clamoring to talk to them after church. They just like the attention. Depending on the type of church, the amount of money, the type of the type of funds that's coming through there, the worse it is. I have seen people and I always say this, I just sometimes when it's just one person that's always talking, excuse me. It's kind of, especially when you have a big church, that makes no sense that you be the only person always preaching. It really does not. And, you know, I say this because when Jesus was walking with the disciples, it just, I was thinking of when he was on the, when the disciples were baptizing. We hear about the things that Jesus was doing, but his disciples were actively out there doing things. Jesus was teaching. He was doing different things of that nature. At the time when he came to this earth, all the disciples were still, he was new to everybody, to everyone. And therefore, he was there to, to impart some things onto his disciples to the world, to those who were willing to listen, so they can now go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's why he was up front a lot. But even with his disciples, he allowed them, if you really read it in order, you will see that he was not grandstanding. He was not behaving as if he had to be in charge. He was serving of such that Peter did not even want Jesus to wash his feet. They just did not understand. Jesus could have come and prepared one of them to be crucified. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he didn't. He was going to be the sacrifice. So if there were times where Jesus was up front and all of that, remember he had just come to the world to us. Now, he had always been there since the beginning per John 17. When he did the last known prayer of Jesus, if you read it, he says, he speaks about being there with Jesus from being there with God from the beginning before the world was. So what he has come to do is to equip us so that we can go into all the world and preach the gospel. But there are lots of people who want to be in the position of Jesus in this, and, and even more so, not in the, not in the context of being a servant, being humble, putting others first, but they just want, they want, they think that they're just supposed to be upfront talking all the time. These individuals have no humility. A lot of them are, they think that they can, they focus more on their 
talents and their abilities, which has nothing to do with the condition of their spirit. So they don't deal, they can have a lot. These people will still be hateful, unforgiving, unyielding, disruptive individuals in their regular lives. They go home, they're chaotic people. Their children may be terrified of them. They may be having affairs. You know, they put the porn on pause before they got to the service. They are problematic within their neighborhoods. They are the worst employees at work. They go to work late. They leave work early. They don't follow through with their projects. They don't turn in their 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 requests for leave pay time off in time they they are you know I, I know this because I've been a supervisor many times and I've experienced this I just remember specific individuals who will do this and so they don't follow the rules they don't turn in their request in time somebody else already who's doing the same job who let's just say we have two front desk clerks, let's just say, let's just put it that way for an example. And one of them has already weeks out, put their leave in and they're going to have their day off, have their time off to do whatever they need to do or taking their time off. And then this person suddenly wants to do this thing. It's not an emergency. It's nothing of that nature. This person just has a habit of doing that. Well, they put it in, you're telling them, hey, I don't think this day will be possible. Can you do this other day? And they're just insisting, right? So they, they don't do what they're supposed to do. They insist. And then what do they do? They're going to call in sick that day. They're going to call in sick that day. This is a norm. You know, when I've been on TikTok, I see this. People actually, and I'm going to say a specific group of people, maybe they're the only ones being honest or they're the only ones bold enough to talk about it, but they do this quite a bit. They're calling in and, oh, you can't give them the time off. I'm going to take the time off regardless. Okay. So you will find, for example, I'm giving you an example that these individuals who are claiming to be followers of God may be doing these things. They're very problematic in their personal lives. Excuse me, guys. But in church, they're up front and people are listening to them. And because they're getting, especially with leaders, people are listening to them. People are drawing to them like bees to, to flowers. They never, they very rarely, if ever, have a moment to reflect on themselves because they have people who are constantly cheering for them. And so they, they a lot of them go into the church and they hide behind some sort of auxiliary or being up front. And they love that. They love the praise. They love talking. They love the mic. They love the, the amount of attention that they get. Undeserved attention. They don't deserve that kind of attention. They don't deserve that level of accolade. But in their minds and how they think, they do believe that they deserve it simply because they are who they are. Because they cannot see themselves. Well, they know who they are, but they've, they've reached a place where they don't care anymore. And the audience and the, the lights and the clapping and all that stuff and being up front and people's looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, they, they're going to love being in church. Now, people who are not in leadership, the narcissists that are in the audience, they within the congregation, a lot of times what they're going to like, just depending, is that church is a place that you can go and tell a sad story and people are going to just believe you and be like, oh, you can go there and get some free stuff. Well, the church nowadays are changing. They're not as benevolent as they were before. But at the very least, you play your cards well enough, you get a free meal. Somebody could take you out to eat. There's always someone in the congregation who is either vulnerable or truly kind. 
So therefore, these narcissists will spot them out. So they like to go to church for they get to to tell sad stories and they get attention and they get to lie and they can tell these fantastic stories and no one's really going to search, going to try to vet them. They just believe them and they can get sympathy and help and assistance and all these things just by lying. Now, don't get me wrong, there are people who actually need the help and they get the help, but there are a lot of people who enter into the house of God to lie. They're narcissists that like to go to church so they can perform and cry and be up front and roll and carry on. They're narcissists who go to church for a partner. They want a man or a woman. They go there with intent to pick off the weak. They go there with intent to pretend or the pretense to, they have a facade, an image that they want people to believe that they are. So they get into ministries and they get to be up front and they get to, they for, they can override and ignore the things that they really need to work on, okay? As far as their character, their spiritual condition, they don't want to work on those things. They don't want to face those things about themselves. Again, they want to deal with their, their gifts and talents and whatever auxiliaries that they are on, who's paying them attention, who's seeing them coming in in their nice outfits. Some people just get that high. They'll go buy an outfit, probably with a tag, still want to take it back later or not. But it's the whole show to be there with the intent of either trying to snag a man or a woman, get their attention, get a husband, get a wife, have a boyfriend, have a girlfriend, have a jump off, or just to have sympathy. Other narcissists go there after they've spent an entire week of plundering and destroying people in their wake. There's a big explosion as they enter into the church. All the wrong that they've done, they like to come to church to feel better about themselves not for true repentance and to turn to to be healed and to change and to wrong their rights but correction to right their wrongs just to for a good washing off to feel better however when they leave they may have a moment that they would kind of be good for the ride back but they're going to go right back to it as the word of god talks about like a dog going back to its own vomit or a pig just jumping in the mud. So they come in and they trot in and they are filled with all the debauchery of the week and they shower, right, per se, through the word and crying. and <laughs> They do all that and roll and scream and whatever else they want to do, huck and buck and rip the back of their shirts out screaming and hollering and being rolled up like a little burrito at the front and let loose but all of that dramatic stuff is it's all superficial it's not going it's not coming from the heart because they're going to go right back and do what they need to do you know we have all gone through things in our lives where we have been we, we probably really want to change and we didn't change immediately but these people don't want to they just don't desire to change they just they like to perform and they like attention and that's why there's so many of them entering into the house of God there's a time I think that they probably didn't as frequently because I want to say there was a time when the church was really about seeking the Lord and seeking his presence and the presence of the Lord were really in a lot of these places. So therefore, if you're going to play the game, that person must around and really get saved for real and really turn their lives around to the Lord because the spirit of the Lord was present and would convict their hearts and bring about change. Or they will be so convicted and because they know that they are not going to change, they don't return to these places. But a lot has happened. There is a fly in the ointment that's giving off a stink. And you know, when something stinks, you're gonna draw things. You're gonna draw vultures if, a, if something is dying or is dead. 
You're going to bring vultures, buzzards. Those type of things are going to enter into the house of God. Uh, those are those. Well, those are things that are going to circle and land and pick off of what is dead. In addition, you're going to have flies, those big nasty flies that you see sitting on manure and dead things and, and maggots. That's what's slithering into the house of God. So if you, it, well, not the house of God, these places where the spirit of the Lord is not, it's not, it's just, it's just the this, this setup. That's a lot of the ways that the enemy is keeping people distracted, are keeping people distracted. It's by having this place where his spirit is not, but they are appearing as such. So therefore, the narcissist and those of this nature, they know they can enter in. They can get what they need for that week. They can have their egos inflated by being seeing their names on the kiosk or getting some announcement or asking to get the mic to speak and say something being recognized singing lauding it's just a big dog and pony show it's where everyone gets to preen and everyone gets to to stand out and the main person being the pastors and leaders who are up front but the character and the individuals that you're bringing in when the spirit of the Lord is not there and it's just really a dead place. It is just a mausoleum, as I've said in a past video. Mausoleums look so beautiful that sometimes you forget that there are actually dead bodies in there because there's so much work that's been put into them. And narcissists love church. They love going there because they get to shine. They get to be prideful. They get to be up front and they don't have to face themselves. So we have to be careful even in our own walk because it doesn't even just take a church building. We have to be careful even when we're on these platforms. Sometimes you see me, sometimes you don't. My videos of the past, you would have seen me more. Uh, but over time, the Lord just laid it on my heart not to be on camera too much because sometimes I do notice myself I see myself, I'm talking and I see my face and all of that. And um, I don't think I get into myself like that, but I think that sometimes there is a danger in always seeing yourself all the time. And you just need to be behind the scenes and you give that word and you pop up every now and then and say what you need to say. And always ensure even being behind the scenes, just ensuring that you keep yourself humble, that you don't allow your, your sub counts to determine whether you think you're better than someone or not, or less than. A lot of times, what do people do? They go to another channel and they look and they see their sub counts. And if they see that the person has more subscribers than them, then they'll think, oh, this person's really doing something. Or if they have more, oh, mm, okay. And if they're up there in the one mil or the high Ks, then of course they can get very prideful. I see that a lot. They just have a look. You remember when in, in Proverbs where the Lord says the seven things that he hates and he says a proud look. For some reason, I couldn't understand. What does that mean? When God is speaking about a proud look, he's not saying that you, let's say your, your child graduated high school or med school or whatever. Of course, you can be happy. And it's okay to feel some pride. You feel proud of them, right? Being proud of someone or proud that man I'm so glad I accomplished this I finally got my degree I finally did this I cleaned up my life I'm I'm two years sober those are things that you can be proud of you're happy 
of the accomplishments of those things. But pride is when you are like lifting up yourself and thinking that you're better than someone else, you see. And therefore, with the when he says a proud look, I used to wonder, but can't you see now when you look on certain when you when you see certain people you see that proud look there's this look that they have on their faces especially if they have material wealth we're not talking about the happiness and the confidence that goes with it it's hard to it's hard to explain but you know there's this proud look in the way they walk and the way that they behave and if we bring it back to the church you see there's a way that leaders, certain leaders in the church will behave where you see that pride and they have this proud look and those with the really big channels, not all, but most of them with a big channel, you'll see it. If you go to their channels, some of them that you've known that are really big and you maybe go to when you, when you go to their channel, you can click on their oldest video and you'll see them if, if they haven't uh, deleted those things or made them private. You'll see them, how humble they were at the start. Or you may see that they've continued in their humility. They've just simply grown and matured in Christ. However, what you might find with some of them is you'll see when they were just pure and they were on fire for God and you can see it. You can look at them and see the light of God on them. And then you go to present time and you see how they behave now. And you see that look. You see that proud look on their face. You'll see how they handle their viewers and the things that they say. And a lot of times, as you get more mature in Christ and the Holy Spirit begins to open up your eyes, you will see in their eyes that look. I always see those little beady, shifty eyes to me. It's like, I don't want to say rat eyes, but I could just see you. I see them very clearly. I've always been able to do that from, I was very young and I didn't understand what that was like how come i could see people like it's almost like they have this idea to see like a darkness about them or just it almost looked like their face they have a little mask on I, I can't explain but i can always sense something with them but you will be able to see that proud look the proud look that look that God hates and he despises. So we just have to be careful within ourselves and then just look at it. Why do narcissists love the church? Free sympathy, free gifts, free attention, and people show up just to listen to you talking and looking at you. That's one of the biggest things for leaders those leaders who are narcissists, they can stand there and talk and people are just going to listen to them. And <clears throat> excuse me, most people are not going to leave because he or she has so much to say. And even those who are the most humble, they still, we still have to be careful because it can happen. Because remember, Saul was humble at first. And David was humble for the most part, but guess what? He, he had his moments. His pride cost him where the sword of God was in his house. You know, the sword of vengeance was in his house for all generations after him because of what he did to Uriah by sleeping with, by sleeping with um, Bathsheba. So anyway, guys, this is all I have. I hope you enjoy your day and God bless.